<laughs> All right. Um, Robin Houck, I am uh, an eighth grade teacher at Myrtle Grove Middle School, New Hanover County, North Carolina. Um, we did a lesson on scatter plots today where we estimated the ages of famous personalities and graphed them with their actual ages. Perfect. So I'm going to have you do it. do it one more time for me and then put the school name in to plug that in. Okay. <laughs> Robin Houck, I teach eighth grade math at Myrtle Grove Middle School. Uh, in New Hanover County, North Carolina. Um, my lesson today was on scatter plots. Uh, we were graphing estimated ages of per uh, famous people and their actual ages. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, cool. So, I'm just going to go right into it and then whenever you want to refer to your notes, um, don't pick that up because it makes this ruffling noise that right. the audio will pick okay. up. Um, and then I'm trying to think of whatever else. You're fine, like if you're answering a question, you know, just keep trying to make eye contact as much as possible. Okay. But you can read it, it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay, so cool. Let's go into the first one. Mm -hmm. We want to understand the decisions you made in planning for this lesson and how it fits into the unit and year. First question is, how did this, le how did this lesson connect to and build on students' prior skills and knowledge, what was taught before the lesson, and what will come after it? Um, with the scatter plots, um, a lot of the times you need to really focus on, not a lot of times, you need to focus on the linear aspect of it. So be prior to the lesson, we did a lot on y-intercept form with graphs. Uh, we were finding the slope from a graph. We were making a graph from uh, slope-intercept form. So then they made the connection when they saw their scatter plots going in a positive association, positive correlation, they were able to see that line that, um, that represented their cloud of, of data, their cluster of data. So we definitely focused on the linear aspect prior to, to starting our scatter plot unit. about the standards or cluster targeted in this lesson. What did you do to make the lesson reflect the full intent of that standard or cluster? Okay. Um, the cluster that we that I had my lesson on today was scatter plots and the beginning part of our scatter plot lesson was to just understand the correlation of different sets of of data. We didn't really put numbers to them, we, we just gave them information that could have data put into, um, into a graph and then they were to recognize if it had a positive, negative, or no association at all. Um, In this, I'm sorry. No, Does that matter? No, okay. no, you're fine. Yeah. In this lesson, the uh, the entire cluster was. What was I going to say? Do you want me to ask the question again? Yeah, I think that it was. All right. Can I just? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so in this lesson, we I had them come up with their own data by making the guesses of the ages and then giving them the actual ages of the famous personalities. They were then graphing and constructing their own scatter plot. Um, once they realized that their their points were going to be all over the place, they, they brought out the word scatter plot and then used that to understand that they could represent their data in a line of best fit. So then that used their data to um, do the next Scatter plot um, standard in the in in the Common Core to where they're procedurally they made their scatter plot and then there's some other words that I wanted to use. Um, we can take it from the top. Okay. If you want to start that one over. Yeah. You want to do that? Okay. Because I wanted to really. I'm gonna The standard and cluster that I went through today was scatter plots, and I had them create their own scatter plot with data that they collected in terms of estimating the guesses of the ages of famous people, and then I gave them the actual ages. So they um, created their own scatter plot, then they 
were to understand that they could represent that data in a um, line of best fit, it did have a correlation and we took it from there in order for them to decide whether or not they were a good guesser or a better guesser than someone in their group and where the y-intercept and the slope interpretation of that came into play whether or not they were good at making their guesses of the ages of the people. Which of the core action indicators do you think this lesson best exemplified? Do you want me to say the number or just, you know what I mean, because I did. You can do either, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, because I had um, number two on there. And then it was. Yeah, if you want to get really specific, go for it. Okay. Did you want me to, just to start or did yeah, you want to ask me? Yeah, So which of the core action indicators do you think this lesson best exemplified? I think core action number two where the um, instructional practices allow the students to master the content of the lesson. Um, I gave them a lot of time to try on their own to find the slope, um, procedurally getting the information that they needed just to um, create that line of best fit, the Y equals MX plus B. Um, I had them, you know, use their student, use other students in their groups to help them understand um, how to get to a certain place they needed to in the lesson. Some of them struggled in terms of, you know, what do I need in order to get that slope? And someone had already next to them found the two points that would that would help them find the slope of, of the line. They went and they got their materials that they needed in order to. Um, best represent that line. We used spaghetti noodles so they were able to manipulate that line a little better. I found that when we did this previous construction of scatter plots, the rulers were a little hard because they couldn't see the, line, the, the plots of the points on either side of that line of best fit. We're interested in how the shifts required by the CCSS are being incorporated into the classroom. Discuss how this lesson illustrates the shifts required by the CCSS. Um, I think that the most important one is focus. I had to focus a lot on the building of their knowledge of slope, um, them understanding where to find it and why those clusters of points on a scatter plot could have a slope that represented their data and then possibly later help them predict with um, their line, their linear model that they chose that they they have created with their um, with their line. How did you teach the content of this lesson prior to the CCSS? What is the same and what is different? This year with the Common Core, I taught a lot more in terms of them exploring how to find the slope, what it meant, and I think that prior to this lesson, just going in and making sure that their understanding of what that, what that meant compared to just giving them more problems, finding empty graphs of slope and more, um, more application of where they would see slope in the real world was definitely, was definitely done before this lesson. Student engagement is crucial to the work of the CCSS, and we want to understand how you ensured that all students had the opportunity to productively engage in the work of the lesson. How did the students handle this lesson? Did they understand the mathematics of the lesson? Um, I gave them engaging material in terms of just the famous people that they were interested in, um, knowing their actual ages, and then just guessing kind of got them started in terms of just wanting to uh, get the lesson started. The math behind it, I did see a lot of them not able to get started even to graph and so I walked around making sure that they understood that if they labeled their x and the y, the independent and dependent variable, then they were able to plot their points and then they saw that the scatter plots were coming out there and then going through the, the questions, I, I did guide them through that quite a bit. Um, because they needed that extra guidance to get to the point of finding the slope and the 
and mm. the y equals mx plus b, the, the y-intercept line that would represent that data. Explain how you differentiated in the lesson. Did all students have the opportunity to work on grade level content? Uh, yeah, all students did uh, work on grade level content. I feel that that class that I have, um, they're definitely below grade level. Uh, I did have to step by step really guide them through the process in finding the slope. Even looking for the y-intercept, a lot of them did grasp that if they did draw their line all the way through. Um, some of them took it upon themselves to go get their materials that they needed, but I, I did suggest to them, what did we do yesterday? What did we use in the past to try to find that line of best fit? And that did seem to help them find what they needed in order to successfully get their line of best fit. Differentiating, I think there are a lot of students in the class that kind of need that extra push to think that they know what they're doing before before they get started. So I, I guess maybe I just went around to them and made sure that they were definitely um, on the right track. Teachers and students, pardon the interruption. Today there will be no... Which behaviors from Core Action 3 did the students best exemplify in this lesson? Okay. Um, in Core Action 3, I feel like the students illustrated the behavior of even reaching a point of frustration. Um, they did persist in trying to solve their challenging problems. A lot of them did feel it was challenging because I did let them just go and try to use all of what they knew about scatter plots, uh, line of best fit, slope, and y intercept, and trying to put that all together. And I think that. Um, I successfully did get a lot of students that completed that part. Um, I know that tomorrow we'll talk about more in terms of what they're going to do with interpreting the slope and, and the y-intercept to then justify or see who was a good guesser or bad guesser. We're going to go through under and over guessing also. Reflecting on the lesson, what worked well and what might you do differently? Um, I feel like they needed a little, they needed more practice on the, I felt like they should have known how to find the slope more. I'm, one of the students said to me that their, um, the numbers were a lot larger than they were used to working with and they didn't understand, but as soon as they looked over and they saw someone using a table finding the slope, um, someone's y-intercept was, was highlighted with a big point, they, they did put it together in terms of trying to find um, what worked for them in terms of they they struggled with the fact that everything was going everyone's was going to be different and once they understood that theirs didn't have to look the same as the other person's I think that they then took ownership in trying to find and work through the rest of their problems last question okay. are there any surprises or unexpected student behaviors today uh, definitely I thought they were a little more um, excited and had more conversation that I thought, side conversation that I thought that they would with the video in the room and things like that. I just, I feel like, I thought that they were going to be a little bit more um, focused on the lesson. And I think that they got sidetracked pretty easily compared to what I thought was going to happen. We'll see what happens tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> You're done. All right. Good work. So I definitely have to do this tomorrow.